Hello, in this demo, I'm going to be describing how to build a soft slab cylinder. It's sped up so that you can see things a little quicker and my instructions can be a little quicker and you can stop and pause if you need to. So because I'm building with a slab, I want a good amount of clay to start with and I'm going to smash it onto the canvas with little handfuls overlapping, pounding them together. I don't want to make it too thin because the slab roller should do the work and I want it to expand it and make it even for me. So I'm going to make a strip of clay in the center by smashing these pieces together and then make it probably half inch, inch thick, pound it all together, push it on the canvas. This should take in real time just a few minutes. You don't want to worry too much about smoothing the clay out. You don't want to worry too much about going too thin so that you know that it, the slab roller will squish it for you. There's my blob, it's kind of a strip. I want it to be as rectangular as possible so I can use the corners. And eventually I'm going to wrap that piece of clay, that slab around a cylinder to create a set of mugs. As you can see here, these have leaves pressed into them and then I'm careful to make sure that all the parts are functional. So I have handles that can fit in my hand. I have a nice uh, level lip so that it doesn't dribble when I take a drink out of it. And I checked my mug against it if I'm gonna make another one of this set so that my slab is just a little bit wider. I also like a thin slab for my mug so that it's nice and warm. When I put my coffee in it, my hot chocolate, I can hold on to it like that and I have a nice warm, cozy mug to drink out of. So I run this through the slab roller. You can use rolling pins too. I just like the slab roller because it's quick and easy. And I roll it through. And I'm about a quarter inch thick for this one. And then when I take it out, I have a nice thin slab. That's more than I need for one cup, but then I have extra. Then I use a T-square, and I use that specifically so I can get right angles. So I go as far as I can to the edge of the slab, slice off the extra, and then I'm gonna use the T-square to lean into the clay so it's nice there. And I'm always protecting the side of the clay I wanna keep. So I'm gonna cut closest to me here so that when I cut the pieces I take off are the pieces I don't want and I'm protecting with the T-square the slab that I want because sometimes it's really easy for the knife to veer off into the clay and mess it up. Now, I don't wanna mess up my edge that I just made there because I was very carefully and cut it, um, but I do need to wrap it around the cylinder. Now, cardboard cylinders, plastic cylinders, whatever, you know, you have will work perfectly. The only thing is that clay will stick to them. So I'm going to take about two, maybe three sheets of newspaper and I'm gonna flatten it. And I wanna wrap the newspaper around the tube really tight. I want a smooth, even wrap. I don't want any wrinkles or they'll add wrinkles to the inside of my cup. And then I don't have a nice smooth cup on the inside. So I can tuck the edges in. I don't even need tape. It's like magic, voila, there you go. Then I take the cylinder, I put it up against the edge of my clay. I wanna make sure the cylinder is level on the bottom. Some of them have a little bit of an angle in my classroom, so make sure it's, it's nice and straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got that, got that, all right. Then line it up against the bottom edge and line it up against the side so that, and then I pick up the whole canvas so I don't mess up my edge and because it's easier to peel the canvas back and protect the slab, than it is to pull the slab off because sometimes that canvas having been um, had the clay pressed into it will stick and this is sticking a little bit here I can take a knife a fettling knife and just sort of slice underneath there and it's okay if that slab gets messed up as I'm doing it because I'm gonna fix it up as I come around I don't mind little cracks in it that happens often because I'm asking the clay to curve quite a bit so I slide it around I get the extra off and as soon as it overlaps I'm gonna press it into the clay all right, so now I have my tube. We're gonna speed up even a little faster here because some of there's some important parts in this next part. But I wanna take that tube. I don't care if the sides are messed up because I'm gonna fix that in just a minute. And I'm gonna cut a ring around the outside. So I put it on an extra piece of slab and I'm cutting maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter an inch extra clay around the bottom of that base so that I have some clay to loot up the sides of the cylinder and make it all fit together. So I take all the extra clay away I start to loot that up, I peel it off the canvas, and now I want to make sure that I'm really blending those two pieces of clay together, the base and the sides. Now, I don't want to put my hand on the top right there, so I'm trying to tell you to do. put your hand on the top. No, because what you're going to do is actually push the cylinder through the bottom of the base, 
and then it's not going to work. So put your hand on the side, just like that. And while your hand's on the side, do some little circles, do some bigger circles, bigger circles, giant circles, all the way around and around and around, and then roll it. And you're going to roll it on the side. And what that's doing is it's pushing the clay up gently around the side. I'm not pushing down while I do that. I'm just making some circles with the clay. Then I'm going to take my serrated rib. I'm going to loot across any cracks, any seams I have along the side. And I'm also going to loot up any of the extra clay along the bottom because I want a nice straight cylinder. I don't want a blob of clay along the bottom. So I do actually end up removing some of the clay as I'm pulling it up from the bottom. Not a ton, but enough so that I keep the cylinder straight because I would like a nice straight cup. So I come all the way around, get the cylinder nice and straight, and then I can curve the serrated rib, flip it around in my hand so the smooth side is now against the clay. I loot the clay up along the side. I don't want to see any canvas texture. I don't want to see any rough texture. My surface isn't perfect, but I'm kind of giving myself a nice canvas to add decorations and things later. And also, as I'm doing it, you may notice I'm making the top uneven, and that's okay. That happens. So now, I'm looking at it. I want the top to be even, right? Because if it's going to be a functional mug or a functional cup, I have to make sure that it's not a dribble cup and the top is level. So I take the ruler and I find the lowest point and I'm going to mark, I can mark both sides of the ruler actually, all the way around and make sure it's nice and straight pressed against the cup so that I get the same height all the way around starting at my lowest point. So I know I can cut that off. And then I'm going to take my ruler because it's a nice straight edge and I'm going to push that into the surface of the clay and as that goes around if we were a little more zoomed in we could see that there's a nice line there now this clay is pretty soft so I'm not going to cut it today I'm going to wait a day so it can dry out a little bit and then I will cut it the rest of the way because I really need it to be a nice level top to make it a functional cup I'm going to use a fettling knife a smooth thin fettling knife to make that cut not sawing at it but one smooth cut now, here's what's happening. I have a cardboard tube in there and some newspaper, and it's absorbing moisture from the clay. If I want to take it out, oh my god, it's not coming, it'll come out, ah, what do I do? Well, that's because the newspaper and the cardboard is expanding and the clay is shrinking because it's drying. Oh, actually it was a plastic tube, sorry about that. So, voila, it was magic, did you see the magic? I took it out, magic, it came out. That's why we wrap the tube in newspaper. I can kind of tuck that in. I'm gonna leave the newspaper in overnight so it gets it leather hard and then tomorrow, I can work with it more easily. Great time to work on the surface when it's a little bit drier. Um, and then I, I, I get anxious, you know? I just I want it to be level. Nope, not a good idea. Not a good idea. It's too gooey, but you can see I would slice with a Fetley knife around like that. So now I have that. I take a flat-ended loop tool to cut in my slight base edge because I know where to stop my glaze if I have a little edge right there, but not very far in because I don't want to weaken my seam right there. So it's resting on the table. I loop that around, I have my cylinder, I am happy for today, and I think it's all done, and I am done, and there is the cylinder, and I can design. Thank you. That is it. I guess that's not it. It's still going. There's a cylinder. I want the inside smooth, the top level, and a handle I can ha and hold on to, so it's functional. Mm -hmm. Functional cylinder. Okay. There you go.